I have always been interested in the finer things in life. I've had the opportunity to navigate, you know, upper circles of society from time to time. At some point, I was really into all of that. However, never really wholeheartedly. Like, there was always something that made me, like, be a little bit like, ugh, you know? And I would say that I definitely lived quite on autopilot and just going with the flow back ah. then. Because I remember... Now, I don't know what version of life you find yourself in, but I definitely wasn't with the upper middle class people, let me tell you. And I never really cared for luxury life. Like sometimes as a kid, maybe I'd want to dream about it, but I actually just don't care that much. I don't care about things very much. I care mostly about gardens and dogs. And I don't even have a dog or a garden yet, but that's what I care about, okay? This is Anna Bay. She is a content creator. We've covered her before. She has over a million subs. And it is an interesting bubble. Again, I'm not one for luxury life, but it's an interesting, I like to jump into it to see like, hey, what are you doing? You know? Remember, I would be networking with people, not really thinking about like, are these genuine people? Are these just fake friendships? Are these even good people? Also, you know, attending like parties, events, galas. Like it can See, this, leaving the house. See, this is why I say I'm not an influencer. I'm a content creator because I to leave the house, like influencers, like go to parties and like buy products. And I'm just like, I just want to stream. Thank you so much for being here, by the way. Like I, I don't want to do this with my life, but okay, no judgment. Let's see how, let's see what realization she came to. Feel quite fake. And it has a reputation of being fake. But the thing is that it is also like fun and exciting and adventurous and has. See, I think when you're too neurodivergent, being too fake is why you don't end up in rich people circles because they are all fake and lying. And there's a lot of like, see, in poor people circles, we all lie or people lie, but then we all just kind of like move for, like who cares but I feel like in fancy circles there's a lot of lying that has like a, a lot of like condemnation and like you're kicked out and there's like high school with money but times a million it's a lot of stress is what I'm trying to say if my little brother lies to me I'm just like okay don't lie again dork I'll give you a noogie right but in like networking circles where there's money on the line ooh, I could never fake that hard my facial expressions alone I would just sit there and be like like they would know I had a problem because like I can't keep this face neutral. Loads of opportunities and whatever. So you end up sometimes maybe like, okay, you know what? I'm going to close an eye on all the BS, like on all the fake stuff. So I kind of spent a lot of years, you know, back and forth in terms of like, okay, I kind of like it, but then I kind of need a break from it. And Ooh, is she popping a bubble? It sounds like she's popping a bubble, which is great. We all live in bubbles, but... I wonder if she's switching her bubble up. And, you know, I kept kind of continuing with this lifestyle for many, many years. And then when, you know, I moved to Geneva, you know, settled Ooh. down, married life, blah, blah, blah. But as I finally kind of disconnected from uh, the luxury that is in your face in London 24-7, especially mm. if you are living in a certain part of town that I was in, I was continuously being fed with, you know, Bentley Rolls Royce or, you know, this or that. And you start thinking that, well, this is what I should aspire to. This is what's going to make me happy. Mm -hmm. And no matter what you acquire in life, no matter what kind of experiences you have, what destinations you visit, what designer items you own, deep down, it's actually not that special. You oh, yes, girl, it ain't that special. It's all just things. In a hundred years, those purses are going to be somebody else's. They're not even going to be yours. In a hundred years, your things are going to be somebody else's things. And that's what it is. That's what it and is. And I felt like, okay, yeah, it's fun. But then you kind of realize that it wasn't that special or the grass is actually not greener on the other side. It's True. almost like there is an illusion about what we are fed with in our society about what success is, what successful people do, how they look like, about famous people too, how they are, how they live their life, like mm. their bubble, their... <gasps> oh, did she just say bubble? Write it down. I'm collecting all the times I see someone say bubble because... People are trying to slander my beautiful bubbleness and telling me, Brittany, Brittany's the bubble queen. Nobody says bubble. Girl, you all know we live in bubbles. You all know we out here live it in bubbles and we all have our own perceptions of reality. Now, here's the, here's the harsher truth. It doesn't matter if you're poor or rich, you can be just as miserable. This is why you have to be introspective. You have to ask yourself, do I really belong here? Is this who I want to be in the story? Is this what I want to do with my life? I'm loving this video already, girl. Say it, girl. Circles. Mm. We have this perception that it's probably like 
mm, like this <laughs> until we see it and we kind of realize it's like this you see i feel like i fell a bit for the pressure of society the information and when we say society we mean the society we're around remember i grew up catholic pop that bubble became an atheist pop that bubble became less associated with any of those people right Every time you have a perception change, you're popping a bubble and you're having a different relationship with yourself. Oh my gosh, people do this in other countries. Oh my gosh, people do this. I live in Europe now. Brittany moving to Europe is going to allow her to pop more bubbles. I love popping a bubble. It's like every time you do it, you're like, oh, cool. Oh my gosh, really? Oh my gosh, what? It's so exciting, right? So here she is. So again, that word society really pisses me off because everyone says it and they don't know what they're saying. You have no idea what you're saying when you're like, oh, this is society. Which one, girl? Because it changes city to city, neighborhood to neighborhood. You know, as a kid who was born in the wrong neighborhood, sometimes it's just a street over and all of a sudden you're in a different bubble, you know? That society feeds us of what success is, of how success should look like. And I feel like I wasn't questioning enough back in the days of what I truly wanted or what truly made me happy. I'm not a zombie or maybe mm. just like following along and be like, okay, well, I guess the dream is to be on a yacht or to be at some really exclusive party or go to some charity ball. I, I asked my husband the other day, I was like, hey, I would like this kind of house and this kind of vibe. Um, do you mind if I make an effort to buy us those things? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, but do you understand that that means we're going to have to really schedule in like date nights and times together because I'm going to need to spend like more concentrated time working. You know what I mean? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, that's the decision we made as a couple. Like, hey, what do you want to do with our life? We were taking a walk um, by the sea because we live by the sea and there was a yacht there that was worth like a lot of monies. Okay. Like $20 million. And I'm looking at this yacht and I'm like, who owns this yacht? Like, whose life is this? And of course, it's a rich person. Boats are like named certain things. You can Google boats. So we Googled the boat and like, who does it belong to? And it's a very interesting bubble to own a boat, to be like, I own boats. And I'm like, okay, like, you know what I mean? And so just saying like, do we want to be people who own boats? The answer is no. And also we wouldn't probably build up that wealth in this lifetime to be boat people, but I don't want to be a boat person. You get to choose if you're lucky, you know, as people, as you know, my parents are immigrants from Iraq when they came here, well, came there to the United States, they definitely like sat down together and were like, what do we want our life to look like? What do we, how, what kind of a people do we want to be? They wanted to be devout Catholics who were pro-life and open to life. So they had 10 kids and live a very Catholic life now. And even though half their kids don't go to church and three of us are gay, they absolutely stay true to that dream of being Catholic people who live in their own house. It's paid off. They have a business that's successful. They have a great relationship. And again, I look at my parents and say, okay, they made their life work for them. I'm going to make my life work for me. And I kind of like that she's talking about this right now because this is a big decision. Your friends, your networking, who you know, all of that will shift as you bubble pop, right? And that is really difficult. That is really difficult because it's scary to lose the relationships you've built. But the real ones, I think the one, no, not the real ones. That's the wrong way to word it. The ones that are meant to be with you for longer will be with you. Other ones, it's okay that they were there for a moment of time. It's okay to change and it's okay for those relationships to change, right? I definitely have not been questioning things enough up until in the recent last few years. When I just woke up one day and be like, but wait a second, why do I want these things? Why does she want these things? Great question. What do I say? My favorite question on this channel is why? Why do you feel that way? Why do you think that way? Why? Because asking yourself why isn't, don't answer it like a logic, bro. You're not in a debate, bro. You're in an introspective moment. Don't ask yourself, why is this true? And then reason yourself to an answer because you can logic your way to an answer easy. That's the easy answer. Oh, why did I drink this today? I was cold and I wanted something warm. Okay, that's super logic, bro, of you. Why did you drink this today? I was feeling cold, which made me feel kind of like sad. And I kind of wanted to feel warmer inside and I didn't want to feel too heavy. So I didn't choose coffee and I didn't want to feel too this. So I chose this. So I chose that. Really ask yourself why until you find the answer. I'm just giving you an example, but ask yourself why not the like, oh yeah, I just wanted a drink. <laughs> 
ask yourself, why did you want this drink? Why did you choose this life? Why did you choose this haircut? Why did you choose this clothing? Why do you choose to like this YouTuber? Why am I going to these parties? Why am I hanging out with those people? But then came a time where I started questioning what my leveling up goals were, or even like, what does leveling up mean to me? Not everybody has to have the same version of what leveling up means. Yep. For some, it might be to, I don't know, buy a cabin in the forest and live without running water. Like that's maybe what leveling up means to them because they just want to immerse in nature and live a life undisturbed. But for me, I bought into what media tells us, what social media tells us. Not to say deep down, it's not really what actually makes me happier. And I'd say that a few years ago is when I told myself, why don't you redefine what truly makes you happy, what really energizes you, what really feels meaningful and adds value to your life. I started thinking about my lifestyle. How do I live my day-to-day -day life? What truly energizes me? What truly takes energy away from me? How can I rearrange and make better choices that feels more authentically true to who I am today? You know, it's really difficult to know what's authentically true to yourself, though, because most people, I really do believe, aren't really thinking about who they are. They're thinking about who they want to be perceived as. And I think that desire to be perceived in a way that makes you feel good is one thing. That desire to be perceived as a respectable person is another. That desire to be perceived, I think, does also block you from knowing who you really are. So when you're meditating with yourself and you're asking yourself, like, who am I? Remember, therapy is great for your mental health, but philosophy is a relationship with your consciousness. Therapy is great for your mental health, but therapy doesn't really answer the why. That's philosophy. So when you ask yourself and you're meditating, like, who am I and why do I want these things? Don't ask yourself in relation to being perceived. Ask yourself in relation to who you are as a consciousness and then decide how do I get that life that leads me to my joy, right? And furthest from this concept of evil and into our joy, into our values that also coincides with how I'm being perceived and or how do I play uh, or how do I become a good like community member? So when I am being perceived, I'm perceived in a way that's authentic to who I am or is within reason to who I am, right? Okay. So I cut out some activities, added some activities, like I started horseback riding again after a break of 15 years. And you know, I asked myself, I'm like, what have I been doing all these years? Why have I been wasting my time, like hanging around with fake people and going to fake parties or shop? And again, you find fake people and people you're not actually bonding with. When I say there are these parts of yourself that you're bonding with other people, when we all say, oh my God, I love Abbey and Preach. Oh my God, I love H H H H3H3. Oh my God, like we love, like we love, like we love, like we're saying we have parts of us that love this thing and this thing can bring us together. Oh my God, I love cottagecore. Oh my God, I love goth. Oh my God, I love anime. Oh my God, I love, okay, so those parts are authentic. But then after that, there might be a fakeness to it because you're not bonding on parts of you that you're actually seeing or understanding or vibing with. So the fakeness is about not seeing each other and pretending you are. That's where the fakeness comes in, right? Or two anime fans that like different animes are like, oh, it's like you could fake pretend you're both into the same anime, but you're not. Like I, as a partner, as a person who has a partner who watches anime and I watch anime, we do not watch the same animes all the time. We have a lot of overlap, 100%. But the overlap we don't have, we're just like, yeah, I'm not going to watch that. And we're very honest. I could fake it. I could be like, oh, I'm going to fake it and pretend I like this anime you like. But nah, absolutely not. Because again, I don't want us to build a fake relationship. So no faking it. But in most networking situations, there's a fakeness to things that I do try to avoid. But it's really hard because people are so differently, like different than you, that they're often going to get very offended when you're hanging out with them and if you're honest, which is why when you're working, it's kind of nice just to say I'm working. You don't need to know anything about me for real because people usually get offended. You know what I mean? So it makes business a little bit harder, which is interesting. I wonder, was her life just business or was it also her life? Like when she's partying and going out, is this social media? Because like my life as a content creator is my job. And I like my job, but it's not my life. Like I tell you guys about my life and then I tell people my life about my job. Does that make sense? But this isn't my life. This is my job. So this is like one part of my life. Even though it's a big part, it's still not my life. Does that make sense? 
Hello, events. What have I been doing with my time? I and yet I am still a chronically online person because I refuse to leave my house at this point in my life. I did it all through my 20s. So you could also say my life is also a part of the internet, depending on how you view it. I implemented definitely a new habit of just stop saying yes to anything. I started becoming more selective with my time because what happens when you live a more still life, you actually get to hear yourself, your mm. inner voice. When you're still, that's when a whole world world may open up for you internally but when you have so much stuff going around and voices and rosemary you have such an interesting perspective on this you said she was in the luxury life because it made her money as an influencer obviously right she 100 knew that it wouldn't lead to real happiness it was about making money well most people think making money will lead to happiness that's a very common belief you said this video is an explanation for changing her content and the story she's telling is for sure a convenient lie how neurodivergent of you. Why is that a lie? Right? Like n most people I have met literally think money is the reason you're unhappy. That's why my content is here to tell you like money is not going to make you joyful. It's going to get you happiness temporarily, but it's not going to give you joy. Most people are told that if you make money, you'll be happy. So I don't think she's lying. Why do you think that she's lying? Isn't that a very normal, um, like a belief? Isn't it a very normal belief that if, oh, if I just have money, I'll be, ha or if I just have money, I'll be happy. I think that's one of the most common beliefs that people have, especially who are poor or even who are rich. Noise and escapism. It's very hard to stay grounded, no matter how many yoga classes you go to. So I realized that definitely I have to change my lifestyle. I have to. Money is not the same as luxury goods. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It totally is absolutely is like money is okay first of all happiness is a temporary emotion you're not going to be happy at your mother's funeral unless you hate your mother so the goal should not be happiness the goal should be joy which is consistent even through tragedy right but money is not the same as luxury goods is totally not true there are access luxury goods is a type of money right like luxury goods is a type of money it's a different way of using money. You can't just be rich and have luxury goods. You've got to be wealthy to some extent, or maybe you've got to be rich to have a few luxury goods, right? But I definitely would disagree on that. But I, okay, I, I, that's interesting. Interesting perspective. Live life more on my own terms and really stop with any autopilot habits. I think the art of uh, being authentic to yourself is to keep questioning life keep questioning yourself calling yourself out for any potential bs it's okay to take decisions like this when you have to stay true to yourself and i'm really setting boundaries with the noise with the bs with the toxicness with the shallowness with the things that just don't serve me and i don't care if i seem like a loser a boring person mm -hmm or people think that I disappointed them, or I'm the bad guy because I'm stepping away. I don't care. Like, let or, me- Or when you step away from like, uh, kind of a superficial, like uh, materialistic life, people go, oh, you think you're better than me? And it's like, it's not that I'm better than you, because I really don't believe that. Because you can be a person who's like sacrificing your life in church and you can be a horrible person. What it is, is you're having a different relationship with life. Because genuinely, it's not about being better than other people. It's about having a different relationship with life. Like, I don't think I'm better than people. I think I'm only better than people when it comes to like, you know, like um, superficial things. Like, oh, I've never cheated on my partner. It's like, okay, but like, I'm not that kind of person. Like, I'm not a cheater. Some people are born with a predisposition, I think, because of the dysfunction in their families, not a literal one, to mimic the behavior they saw in front of them and they're probably more likely to cheat. I'm lucky my parents love each other and are together. You know what I mean? Like bragging about me not being a cheater doesn't really make sense because like I was never going to cheat anyways. Like it's not in my personality. It's not like who I am. Like I don't believe like all oh, people could cheat. Like no. It's just not the vibe for some people. It just doesn't make sense to them, right? So bragging about that's kind of silly. Like no one's ever really better than other people. We're just having a different relationship with reality and it only feels like you're better than people because your values are different. You know what I mean? Be the bad guy then. Say what you want to say. Think what you want to think. It doesn't matter. I need to do what's right for me and it doesn't make me a selfish or bad person. However, does this mean that I'm no longer interested in any of the things that the old me would be interested in? No. 
That's not true. I've just widened my horizon a bit nice. and I am more interested now in other things. I still have an interest for high society to certain degrees. I'm only adding a little bit of that in my life now compared to before. Elegance is something I'm still interested in, but I've always had a fairly balanced approach to it where I don't see it as some form of religion or a tool for perfectionism. Mm. I like to add a bit of elegance in my life. But I'm, of course, interested in other things, too. I'm interested in becoming better for every day. Not necessarily better on the outside, but more so better on the inside. Healing issues within myself. It sounds like she's going through an introspection moment. <sighs> Trying to work on myself as a human. I enjoy self-discovery. I enjoy living up to my potential. I enjoy seeking out that potential. And I enjoy manifesting beautiful things in my life. And that's something that I really want to inspire you ladies to do as well. Because I feel like we live in times where there is so much noise around us. So much information that we are being bombarded with. And sometimes you lose your own voice or it gets so diluted with all kinds of information that you don't even know who you are anymore you don't yeah i think that's common whether it's actually just now or or was forever i think that's just always been the truth about humans um <clears throat> hannah says if you have enough money to be secure money uh more money isn't going to fix your mood long term or even if you have enough money to be secure that's not going to fix your problems with your trauma as a child it's not going to fix like your issues it's going to get you to therapy maybe because you can afford it now but it's not going to fix it unless you do the work right so i think it's about that <clears throat> it's about having a relationship with the reality that it's not just about going to therapy it's actually doing the work when you're in therapy it's not just about what money can buy you it's about how you use that money lots of people get rich and never work on themselves they think having the money alone is enough but what good is your money if you never pay like use it to buy your groceries you're going to starve to death right what good is your money if you never use it to buy the thing or to actually utilize in a way that gets you to a better version of yourself, right? You don't even know what you want anymore. What is it that you really want? Figure that out. Have that honest conversation with you. No BS, no lying to yourself. And that is how you stay true to yourself. Especially if you start acting on what that inner voice says and you allow yourself to not be conventional, you allow yourself to be different, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You have nothing to prove. Here on YouTube, my journey will, of course, continue like it always done on leveling up. But I might talk more about things that I haven't really spoken about mm. up until now. So if you're up for that journey, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to hear more on filter conversations, then you're welcome to come inside my Patreon. I'm currently really just letting loose in there and just speaking my mind and sharing everything. Huh. Things that are perhaps not suitable for YouTube. But I'm Okay, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna like this video and I'm gonna subscribe. I wasn't a sub. I never, I only watched her on occasion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick her up. I'm, I like this change. This was eight days ago. I like a change, girl. I like an introspective journey, girl. So, I, okay, I'm excited. Oh, look, she's talking about anxiety, how I cured my anxiety once and for all. Cured is a big word, but that's okay. So, we're gonna, maybe we'll check that out. Um, maybe we'll check that out another day. My head in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 